I'm being made in the image of God. After the events of this week, whatever your take on who's right and who's wrong, cold blooded murder's wrong. But I think to do that falls short of the answer. Not that that isn't important, but I think everyone in here believes that. And I don't necessarily need to lecture you on being made in the image of God. And that we're all made in the image of God. Amen? Okay. So maybe it's better that I do what God had put on my heart. And that is to turn to the book of Proverbs, chapter 1. You see, this week, we are in Proverbs every night. This week, with the kids, we're going to be taking them to the book of wisdom every night and trying to teach them from the Proverbs. So I thought maybe it would be good to start with, what's a proverb? And what are the Proverbs there for? Why is, what is the purpose of Proverbs? You know, I like to know why I'm doing something before I do it. Anybody else? You know, don't just tell me to do something. Tell me why I'm doing it. And then I may have a little bit of motivation. Right? Um, it was a number of years ago. My dad asked my brother and I to reside the barn. He didn't have to tell me why because it was very plain. It's full of woodpecker holes. And so we put up nice metal siding. Knew I had plenty of motivation. Boy, it looked nice afterwards. If you ever go out to my my dad's place on my brother's farm, that's really hard for me to get used to saying. Um, you'll see that siding looks almost as good today as it did when we put it up. The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, to know wisdom. He gives us what he's writing about <coughs> right at the beginning he has written and collected all of these proverbs for this purpose so let's stop and let's think about what wisdom is D.A. Hubbard said wisdom is intensely practical not theoretical basically wisdom is the art of being successful at forming the correct plan to gain the desired results. Wisdom is the art of being successful, forming the correct plan to gain the desired results. It is the seat of the heart, the center of the moral and intellectual design. Newhouser said it this way, this, the essence of wisdom is skill, the ability to do a job. The same word is used in Hebrew for the skillful workers that prepared Aaron's garment and of those who built the tabernacle and the temple. Wisdom is offered by the book of Proverbs is skill for living. Not merely intellectual or academic, it's primarily moral. Skill for living. You can know an awful lot and have no skill of living. And there's people that have incredible skills at living that don't have a very high IQ and don't know a lot, but they're very wise. They know how to apply what they do know. So Proverbs is about living and about living wisely. Proverbs should never be misconstrued as promises. Let me, let me give that to you again. Proverbs is about a skill set of living. Proverbs is not promises. It's not the intent of the author to offer promises. It's the intent of the author to offer skills by which you can live a godly life. There have been plenty of Christians that have claimed Proverbs, like train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it, and say, I must have done something wrong because they departed. There was a promise there, and so it must be on me. Wait a second. Hold up. Slow down. 
And remember what a proverb is. It's a skill for living, not a promise of a result. Okay? It's a skill for living. So please, as you go through the proverbs, absorb them, put them into practice, but don't claim something that isn't really there. I, I, I'm not saying there aren't plenty of promises in Scripture you can claim. There are. Amen? Praise God. But there's no one. We want to look at the first seven verses in a few short minutes. First, we want to look at verse 2. We're going to divide verse 2 into two parts, and it then we'll take those two parts and show you in verses 1 through, through 5, and then verse 6, how they relate to verse 2, and then we'll talk about verse 7. First of all, verse 2 says, To know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding. To know wisdom and instruction. Verse 3, 4, and 5 relate to this first part of verse 2. So let's look at that. Instruction or discipline, to know wisdom and instruction, it has the idea of learning through discipline. The same Hebrew word as this is used of the chastising imparted by a parent in Proverbs 13 and 22, and of God training his covenant, covenant people through discipline. Parents, why do you discipline your children? Because you get tired of what they do? Or so that they can become productive, self-disciplined adults? Sometimes it's because you get tired of what they do. Amen? Anybody, anybody agree? That isn't what we should be doing. The purpose of discipline in our lives, by God or by our parents, should be so that we live, learn to live a self Disciplined life. We are disciplined as, a, as our gro we grow up so that when we get to that point in adulthood, we don't need somebody else to discipline us anymore. We discipline ourselves. Proverbs is saying that to know wisdom and discipline, Proverbs helps us understand and absorb and get into a close relationship with the idea of wisdom and, and discipline. Verse 3 then says, To receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, judgment, and equity. The student benefits from instruction. Somebody have a Holman? Don, do you have your Holman with you? I don't have my phone. I don't have my phone. I want to read it out of the Holman, and I didn't bring my Holman up here. I've got it. Thank you. For receiving wise instruction in righteousness, justice, and integrity. Somebody who's receiving instruction is a student, right? And so here we should see that this discipline, this idea in verse 2, in the whole minute, it says, for learning what wisdom and discipline are. I like that. For learning what would, the book of Proverbs exists. He's writing the book of Proverbs so that we can learn what wisdom and discipline are. And then he applies it to a learner, a student who will benefit, saying, for receiving wise instruction. In what? In righteousness. Living right. Righteousness is living right. Simple. Justice. Justice. My friends, be glad God does not give us justice, but he gives us mercy. But we need to learn what justice is. And we need to demand justice. Where justice is perverted, we need to demand that it's made right. And where people say justice is being perverted when it's not, we need to stand on the side of justice. To do that, 
The learner needs to understand what justice is. Needs to understand what righteousness is. What integrity is. We need to learn how to be people of integrity. Does somebody know you as a person of your word? As a person that will do right above everything else? Or are you known as a person who will lie, cheat, manipulate to get your way, to get whatever will benefit you? That's not integrity, is it? Proverbs teaches us, the learner, about integrity. How to live a life of integrity. Secondly, verse 4. For teaching shrewdness to the inexperienced, knowledge and discretion to a young man. The student benefits, verse 3. Now wisdom benefits the simple and the young. This idea of shrewdness to the inexperienced, that word inexperienced, can mean gullible. Or it can mean simple. A simple, a simple person is a way... Not necessarily saying somebody's stupid. Got to be careful saying that words to too many kids in the room. But simply not somebody who has a high intelligence. Just somebody who's very simple. They know what they know and that's all they need to know. Right? Wisdom benefits the teacher who wants to teach shrewdness or wisdom to the simple or the gullible. Somebody who's simple will believe almost anything. Have you ever had kids like that in your class, Cindy? I bet you have. Yeah, believe anything. You tell them. Yeah, gullible. Anybody ever gone on a snipe hunt? <laughs> Is that gullible? What's a snipe hunt? Oh, Tim, we gotta take some of these kids on snipe hunts. So much fun. The gullible. Or you just watch the number, number three, verse five. A wise man will listen and increase his learning, and a discerning man will obtain guidance. Wisdom causes, the book of Proverbs will help the wise to get wiser, to increase his understanding and his learning. And the discerning man, the man that already has a lot of wisdom and discerning, will be able to even be more discerning. Wisdom isn't lost on somebody who is wise and in his years got it together. They can do better too. The wise will get wiser. Now go back up to verse 2. Look at 2b. For understanding insightful things, or in the New King James it said to perceive words of understanding. Proverbs brings discernment and understanding to insightful things. Understanding what God's word says. Understanding what wise people are saying. To understand a proverb, verse 6, and an enigma. Or a parable. The words of the wise and their riddles. As you study in Proverbs, it should help us to listen to wise people and be discerning. And guess what? You start learning who's wise and who's just full of it. You know what I mean? You start having an understanding of who actually is saying something that, wow, that's profound. And who's saying things that you're like, oh boy. They have no idea what they're talking about. <clears throat> the quest for wisdom begins with verse 7. Solomon says that this book is about knowing wisdom and instruction. It's about perceiving wisdom. Understanding the words of the wise. If we want to be wise, 
if we want to have understanding. Verse 7 is the key. I was looking here. It's not, Proverbs 10 is not up there. There's a second time he says this. Uh, I believe it's in Proverbs 10. He says in verse 7, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. He also says, I believe it's in Proverbs 10, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. It's the beginning. It's the starting point. It's the place where you set out from. Because if you start at any other trailhead, you'll be on the wrong road. If you don't start your understanding of wisdom with the fear of the Lord, you're on the wrong path. And you better go start over. So what does it mean to fear the Lord? <laughs> I, I've heard a lot of things in my life. Newhouser says this, Proverbs is not merely a how-to book. Your quest for wisdom begins with the fear of the Lord, who is in a covenant relationship with his redeemed people. So the fear of the Lord has to do with something with the covenant we have with Jesus Christ. I've been told in my life that fear of God is to have reverential awe for God. Alone. Not that we shouldn't have reverential awe for God, but that's not the fear of the Lord. I'm sorry. There's an element to the fear of the Lord that should have you quaking in your boots. Let me give you an illustration. Growing up, I feared my father. I loved my father, and he loved me. I didn't fear getting beat up. I feared discipline. I feared doing something wrong, or at least getting caught in it. Right? <laughs> Everybody's been a kid before, right? Because I knew there were going to be consequences. And when there were consequences, how many have heard me tell about the orange thing before? A few of you. Old matchbox race car tracks were orange in the 1970s. And my brother and I had a set, and my dad would take that flexible track and he'd use it on our rear ends. And it would leave welts. We'd hide them. Then he'd get out the belt. It was almost as bad. But it wasn't quite as bad. And I will tell you that I never had bad feelings towards my father. There was always a wonderful love relationship. But I feared my father at the same time. My friends, that's what the fear of the Lord is talking about. We're in a I'm in a covenant relationship with my father. He was my father. He was in charge of me. There, there was, he provided for me, but he also had the responsibility of disciplining me. Jesus said, this is, the, this is the cup of the new covenant. When he instituted the new covenant, right? He paid for us as his bride, but he also said he's going to present us spotless before the throne of God. That there's going to be discipline. He says he chastens and disciplines those whom he loves. If you're not chastened and disciplined by God, you may want to question whether you're one he loves. And what do you mean by that, Pastor? Because he only loves his own children. I'm sorry. He loves everybody, but not in this way. He has a special covenant relationship with his, his children. He has a special love for them. Amen? Mm -hmm. And he disciplines us. And so if you never feel, if, you, if you're doing sin and you're never feeling the discipline of Christ... You may want to think about, well, maybe I'm not loved and I need to deal with that first. Once we understand God's covenant relationship with us and the discipline he brings, now we can start down the road of understanding wisdom. Because wisdom is hand in hand with discipline and self-discipline comes after and with the discipline from God. Um, <clears throat> Anybody ever looked in your rearview mirror and seen a police officer behind you? And the first thing you did was look at your speedometer? Why? Because you feared them. 
No, they may have been your best friend in that cop car back there, but you feared getting the consequence of speeding, right? Absolutely. That's the same thing. Same concept here. The fear of the Lord. Audra, don't ever do anything that makes you fear the police. I'm just, I'm just saying. <laughs> Keep your foot off the gas. I, Samantha drives like a grandma, so I can't, I don't mean to say anything. I'm sorry, I, mean, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> she does, though. She drives very safe. I, I don't have to worry. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Tonight, Janae, I worry about a lot. <laughs> Tonight, we start down the path of wisdom. And it needs to start in our hearts with the fear of God. Do you fear God? As a loving Father that will hold you accountable for your sin. Not ultimately accountable, praise God, our sins are forgiven, but in this life he's going to discipline those whom he loves. As a good father does with his children. Let's close in prayer. Father, we thank you that we know you. That we ultimately have no fear of being separated from you. But Father, teach us to fear you. Teach us the fear of God so that we can be wise. Help us to impart this to the children that come to us this week. That we show them love that we help them learn discipline and the fear of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Alyssa, come join me, please, and we're going to sing.